Welcome to Vernell TV. Today we're going to walk through how to use Google Analytics. As many of you already know, Google Analytics is a free enterprise class web analytics service acquired by Google in 2005. The service is limited to sites with fewer than 5 million page views per month and used by 57% of the 10,000 most popular websites in the world. Let's begin by setting up a Google Analytics account. A Google Analytics account is fairly easy to set up and you can use the one account to track up to 50 website profiles. First, get to Google Analytics by typing in the URL www.google.com analytics. Then sign into your Google account. If you don't have a Google account, then click sign up now. Once you have signed into your Google account, get back to the Google Analytics page and click sign up to start setting up your profile. Add the domain or URL that you would like to track. Name that profile and then select the appropriate time zone. You will then have to add your contact information and the country you are located in. Review the Google Analytics Terms of Service and check the box that says you agree to them. Then click Create New Account. The final step in this process is to add tracking code to each page that you want to track. There's usually a template that you can add this to so that you don't have to add it to every page. Once you have the account set up, you may want to create filters. Filters are most commonly used to exclude traffic from a specific IP address or subdirectory. An example would be to exclude the traffic coming from users that are within the company. The point of this would be to measure external traffic only. Once you have set up your Google Analytics profile, you can begin to use some of the key metrics that the tool offers. For example, time frame. The time frame is always going to default to the last 30 days. You can click on the Compare to Past box to change the range in order to view previous statistics, as well as percent change. Compare year over year, month over month, for example. Annotations. If you click on the down arrow below the graph on the dashboard, then it will list new annotations which will identify different initiatives that were implemented and might have affected traffic patterns. For example, if a press release was sent out on a specific date, then it might have caused a spike in traffic. An annotation may be a preliminary indicator for why traffic jumped. Intelligence. In the intelligence section of a profile, the user can create alerts. For example, alerts for traffic spikes. Users can set up custom alerts and automatic alerts as well. Visitors. In this section, there is an advanced segments tab in the upper right hand corner, which can be used to identify and segment different types of data, whether it's pay per click traffic versus organic traffic, or new traffic versus returning traffic. One thing to remember is that the settings will remain locked until you uncheck the boxes. Traffic Sources Using the same tab at the top, Advanced Segments, you can segment out different keyword performance data. For example, branded keywords versus non-branded keywords. It's also beneficial to export the data into Excel so that you can easily separate the branded and non-branded terms in order to make your own comparisons. Content the content data will show you how users are traveling through your content. It will show you which pages drive more traffic, how much time visitors are spending on each page, and what keywords are driving users to each page. Goals. The goal section should be used if you have actions that you want your users to take on the page. For example, check out our complete a contact form, submit a donation. Goals can be set up within the analytics settings. This concludes part one of our How to Use Google Analytics series. Check back to Verndale TV for more in-depth tips and tricks on using Google Analytics.